Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So glad to have you all here this morning. We are blessed and honored by your presence this morning. And just uh, uh, be blessed this morning because God is here in the house. Amen. He is here to minister to each and every need that you have this morning. And he just wants us to be a receiver. Are you ready to be a receiver this morning? Yes. Just receive what God has for you. Amen. Amen. And I just want to speak a blessing over you this morning. Father, I just speak a blessing over your people this morning. I thank you, Father God, that they are blessed coming in and going out, Father God. We thank you, Father God, that every place that they go, Father God, that they are blessed and they are highly favored, Father God. We thank you, Lord God, that everything they put their hands to prospers. And Father, I just speak a blessing of healing over them, a blessing of a peace over them yes. in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Father. We just invite you into the remainder of this service, Father God, and that you go with us and keep us. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Turn it over to Pastor. <laughs> I'll ask you all to just uh, look at your neighbor, smile at your neighbor, point at your neighbor. And say, I came, I came to, receive to receive God's good word, God's good word this, day. this day. And I declare, I declare I'm, ready. I'm ready. Are you ready, Are you ready? To, receive to receive God's good word, God's good word. This, day. this day? And I declare, I declare I'll never, I'll never, 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 never ever, ever be the same again, again. In, Jesus in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Woo. Hallelujah. Let's just go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we just plead the blood of Jesus Christ over the rest of this service. Father, we thank you that the eyes of our understanding are enlightened according to the hope of your calling. We thank you for revelation knowledge this day. We thank you that the word of the Lord will have free course in our midst. We thank you for strong utterance and strong anointing this day. And that your people will make a strong drawing on the anointing of God this day. We thank you for answers coming in your presence this day. Holy Spirit, I ask you to help me. As I deliver the message this day, help me, Holy Spirit, as I yield myself to you. Help me to say exactly what I should say and the way I should say it. Help me not to forget, Holy Spirit. Help me to flow with you, Holy Spirit. Help me to flow and never lose my place in this, Holy Spirit, this day. Everything that you've told me, illuminate me, Holy Spirit. I thank you, Father. We're preaching and teaching your word, and signs and wonders follow your word. And we expect to see signs and wonders this day. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Ask if you will to get your Bibles and go to James chapter 1. Glory to God. James chapter 1 in the King James, and you know I'll read it in different translations. In King James it says, Knowing this, verse number 3, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. In the expanded Bible, it says, And let patience, perseverance, endurance, show itself perfectly in what you do, have its full effect, finish its work, then you'll be perfect and complete, mature and whole, or completely mature, and will have everything you need, lack nothing. Will have everything you need, lack nothing. James 1 and 4, same scripture in the New International Reader's Version. And you must allow this strength to finish its work. Then you will be all you should be. And you will have everything you need. Now, when the timing is right, when it's God's timing, we have everything we need, lacking nothing. Sometimes we've got to get God's timing. We've got to get to it. You understand? Um, I want to give you an, uh, an example today. There was this uh, there was this single mother, and she had a small baby, and she's um, can't. There's no hot water in her house. She's having a problem with her hot water. She calls the plumber over. The plumber checks it out and says that you know you have to have a new hot water heater. It says it's going to cost five hundred and thirty dollars for the new hot water heater. Wow. And he said I can go ahead and install it today. She said, Well, there's one, only one problem with that. I only have five dollars in the bank account, but I'll call you back when uh, when God supplies the need, and we'll get it done that day. And you know, 
So she is tempted, very tempted. She has a credit card, and she said, Lord, it would be a lot easier if you just let me put, this is an emergency need, let me just put this on the credit card. And God said, no. He said, I, I want you to stop looking to the credit card. I want you to start looking at me. So I want you to wait on my glory, and I don't want you to do it with plan B. So day after day, she's bathing the little baby, but she's having to heat the water on the stove. When she's taking a bath, she's having to heat the water on the stove. She's heating water for everything. I mean, you know, you don't realize how much you use hot water until you don't have hot water. Amen. And she said, and this going on for weeks and weeks and weeks, and she is just like, and the Lord's just, just telling her, just wait for my time. I, my glory will be revealed, but he wants to see if she would wait. Oh, yeah. And, you know, that's what he's doing with us a lot of times. He's wanting to see if we'll wait. Because if we don't wait, it means we don't trust. Yeah. So... She waited, and uh, she didn't tell anybody about her circumstances. They didn't know. Her brother called her from out of state, and he said, um, you know, a few years ago, you had given me some bonds. I guess they got these bonds from their parents or whatever, and you told me just to put yours up. He said, well, I put yours and mine up so good that I didn't know where I put them. And he said, they've been put up for years, and I just ran across them. And he said... And I was just going through them, and uh, do you want me to mail these bonds to you, or do you want me to just put them up again? And she said, you could mail them to me. That would, that would be fine. And she's acting like it's no big deal. She said on the inside, she's screaming, you know. Like, and he said, yes, it's going to be about $500. Right. Right. Well, she, uh, two days later, she gets the bond. She goes to the bank. It's $535. The plumber wanted $530. She paid the plumber, then she went and had a victory meal at Chick-fil-A for $5. <laughs> now, see, she didn't go in debt for it. She waited and God showed his glory. And so many times that's the case if we'll wait. Now, there was another time, this exact same lady, I'm going to give you actually three things that she did. Another time, she's sitting in a church service. And they're taking up an offering. And uh, the Holy Spirit said, give $25 in this offering. And she said, I can't get $25 in this offering. I don't have $25 in the bank account. And he said, uh, yes, you do. And she said, I've got $26 in the bank account. But $25 <laughs> is for our food. And she's reminded God, we need the money for food. Yeah. So um, he said, I told you to give the $25. <laughs> And, you know, God just won't change his mind about stuff. Amen. He's not He's not flexible that way. Right. You know, we think we're not flexible until we run into God for a little while and then we're miserable for a long time. And we say, what was your way again, God? I remember. <laughs> what, what was that? Yeah. And so she gave the $25. She said that uh, she went on a fast after she gave the $25. Not necessarily because she felt led to fast, but because she didn't have food in her house. Amen. You know, so she's fasting. Said that a few days later, a lady called her up on the phone. This lady did not know her circumstances. She didn't, she didn't let anybody know about the Lord. This lady called her up. She said, could you use some extra food? And she said, it's, it's like, you know, she's wanting to leap up out of, the, out of the phone and say, oh my God, yes, we don't have anything in the house. But she said, yeah, I suppose I could. <laughs> she didn't let on. And she said, the lady said, well, you know, the, the supermarket around the corner or whatever, gives me uh, food that has just expired, especially meat. And it's still fine. It's just, you know, it's, it's still usable for days and days, months, some of it. And, uh, but they have too much of it, and they, you know, they just give it to her. And she gets uh, orders of it twice a month. It's free to her. She said, but my freezer's stocked, and I'm going to see if you could use some of it. She said, sure. And so the lady gave her just an enormous amount of food. Well, she's given her food. For two solid years, her freezer is full to overflowing. She has so much food, so much meat and lunch meat and all this stuff is full to overflowing. So much so that she's given it away to other people. Wow. She started a little ministry for people that were like street people and stuff that didn't have food. And she's taking them food of her surplus. Uh -huh. Now, I want to say something about that. There was a certain time, sometimes 
You should give your tithes. That should not be any question. Right. Your regular tithes and offerings. You know, if I'm having to tell you that, you won't get this. You, you'll miss it because this revelation is too high for you. Because your tithe and your offering, it belongs. It, it belongs. But sometimes the Lord's going to get out of your box. I know he's jumped out of my box many times. And he jumps out of your box and he says, give this amount. And you say, uh-uh. And he says, in this offering today. And if you don't see anything special about it, you don't know anything special about it, you don't know why this one would be anything different than anything else, but in God's way of doing things, He's asking you to obey Him at a certain time. Yes. On a certain time frame. Have you ever noticed when we have a need, we want our need met just like that? Yes. We have a time frame we want it met in. And when God asks us to do something, He's got a time frame He's asking us to do it in. And if we'll follow Him and obey that time frame, if we'll do it when He asks us to do it, then there'll be a special blessing attached to it, like it was with her with the, the meat. Another time, see now, you know, you'd think the Lord will keep His hands off of some of your stuff, but He won't, because He gave you the stuff. And He wants to see if the stuff's got you, or you're going to trust Him. Said so another time she was um, she had got like child support and it was a hundred dollars and it's the first child support she'd ever got and she was you know happy about that and she got a dream she had just received the child support check she got a dream that said give a hundred dollars to this pastor's daughter that she knew and she was maybe overseas or something and uh, she said she woke up and it was so vivid and so real she said that can't be God because I don't have a hundred dollars. And the Holy Spirit spoke to her and said, you just got $100 today. I'm talking about that $100. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. She, she gave that $100. She said she immediately wrote the check out because she knew she'd talk herself out of it. She went ahead and stamped it and, and put it in the mail and sent it. And she needed to go to Bolivia. Didn't have money to even think about going to Bolivia. But the Lord had called her to do something in Bolivia. And God supernaturally paid her whole trip to Bolivia. Wow. But she was obedient. He wanted to see if she's going to... See, we think it's the big things and God said it's the small things that are stumbling us. Because if you're not faithful in little things, you'll never be ruler over much. Amen. Never be ruler over much. If he can't trust you with 25 or 100, how is he going to trust you when you, you've got a great big need, but he can't, he can't get you to meet somebody else's need? Or he can't get you to do us to do what he wants us to do. The miracle of the loaves and the fishes. That wouldn't have been a miracle if he hadn't given his lunch that day at that time. That's right. He received overflow of that lunch because he obeyed at the right time. Our problem is we won't obey when the checkbook is full, not when God tells us to obey. That's right. And the season has passed, the time, the special anointing has passed. And the blessing's not going to be on it like it was on it before. Because actually we're in disobedience, yes. That's right. not obedience. Partial Amen. obedience is disobedience. Amen. All right. Timing is everything. See, we, we, we wait to sow until we have enough to sow. God says, sow that amount. Yeah, I can't afford to sow that amount. Sow it now. The time is now. When we do what God says to do, when He says to do it, Amen. even if it's out of our box, it will be perfect. We will be perfect and entire wanting nothing. If we do what he said to do, when he said to do it. Ecclesiastes 11 and 4, King James says, He that observeth the wind shall not sow it. He that regardeth the clouds shall not reap. In the Amplified it says, He who observes the wind and waits for all conditions to be favorable will not sow. And he who regards the clouds will not reap. Well, when I have more money in the checking account, God, I'll do it then. That's not good enough for God. If you wait, this is good news translation, if you wait until the wind and the weather are just right, you'll never plant anything and never harvest anything. Amen. All right, all right. Amen. Now, me and Sharon, we give tithes and offers on a consistent basis. Consistent. I'm not teaching on tithes today, but tithing is something that's done consistently. If you come here Easter and Christmas and you give twice a year, you're not tithing. Right. I don't care if you get 10% of your income that week on Easter and Christmas, you're still not tithing. 10% right. of your total income, period. 
You say, well, I can argue with you about that, Pastor. I don't think you can because I won't argue about it. Amen. It doesn't matter to me what you do. But my job is to proclaim what God's Word says. Amen. That's my job. Yes. And that's what I'm going to do. Amen. That's right. Now, <clears throat> Ecclesiastes 3 and 1. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. That's King James. In the Geneva Bible, it says all things have their time. To all things there is an appointed time and a time to every purpose under the heaven. Now, if we're patient, everybody say, if I'm patient, if I'm patient God will show me, God will show me the, right time. the right time. And that would be to buy a car, to change jobs, to buy a house, to retire. It's, there's a right time. Um, Captain Van said uh, the Lord woke him up, the Holy Spirit woke him up. There was a right time for him to get that revelation that he had. Amen. And a lot of times the Holy Spirit will wake you up and say, pray, right now. Amen. And you say, well, you know, I'm sleepy right now, but I'll pray tomorrow afternoon. You know, when I get some time, I promise you I'll pray tomorrow afternoon. But the thing about it is, you're praying at the wrong time. Something that could have been averted, maybe in your family, is not averted because you didn't pray. You prayed out of season, out of time. But... It's the wrong time. It's good to pray any time. I'm not saying that. Amen. But I'm telling you, there are special promptings by the Holy Spirit. And He's saying, do it now. Do it right now. Do not hesitate. Do not wait. Don't put me on hold. Do it right this second. But, and there's a reason for it. And, and, and a lot of times that's just a faint impression, but we have to obey that and be sensitive to it. You wake up in the middle of the night and that's not the norm for you. You need to say... Well, is there something or somebody I'm supposed to be praying for right now? Is there something, something quicken it to me? Or, or I'll just pray in the Spirit and, and we're covering it. Mm -hmm. But the timing is very important because things can be averted at certain times. Many years ago, when I was going to leave uh, my job, a factory job, um, we prayed, me and Sharon prayed about it for a while. Now, a husband and wife situation. You know, if you're doing something, you're going to quit something. You're going to start something. You're going to move to another state. You're going to, you know, buy a house. You're going to make a big decision. You guys need to be on the same page. Amen. One of you can't be on one page and one of you can't be on the other. I, you know, in that situation, I couldn't go to Sharon and say, I've been quit. I already did quit. I called them in and I told them, I quit. I'm through. Well, that would have been wrong. Because we've got to be in agreement on it. That's right. But we, we prayed about it, prayed about it, and we prayed about the time for it. We, we felt like I was supposed to leave, but there's the time wasn't right. There's several times that I wanted to leave. You know, because uh, your flesh will make you want to leave prematurely. Amen. Oh, hang on. I need to say that again. Your flesh will make you want to leave prematurely. Amen. Because of frustration Amen. and aggravation, right. or maybe you didn't get a promotion or whatever. But your flesh will, will drive you to leave prematurely. And God said you, you won't be perfect and entire if you leave prematurely. You'll be wanting something. You'll, you'll go through suffering that you didn't have to go through if you'd have waited for the perfect time. Amen. If I'd have left out of the, the timing, we would, it would have caused unnecessary suffering for us. And I wouldn't have been in God's will or God's timing. But our steps were ordered to do that, to quit at a certain time. Um, God has a perfect timing when things will be just right for you to do it. Let me say that again. God has a perfect timing when things will be just right for you to do it. Hang on. God has a perfect timing when things will be just right for you to do it. God has a perfect timing. Hang on. God has a perfect timing. It didn't say I've got the perfect timing. It said God's got the perfect timing. When things will be just right for me to do it. And I won't have to suffer. You don't quit a job or a church or anything because you're mad. Right. You know, I see so many people through the years, through, through years of pastoring, a lot of people say, well, I was led to leave. No, you wasn't. You were a lying dog. <laughs> now, hang on now. Some of them were led to leave. But some of them were led to leave because of, somebody offended them. They hurt their feelings. And they, and they said, I can go to first church and nobody will even see me. I'll sit on the back pew. But actually what it was is they got their feelings hurt and suddenly they felt led to leave. Amen. 
Uh-uh. Suddenly, your boss don't like you at work and you feel led to quit. Suddenly, you, your hours have changed at work and it's a little harder on you than it was before. That's so right. you're going to quit. You can't quit because the hours have changed. You can't quit because you didn't get the promotion. That's right. you, you, you can't quit unless God tells you to quit Amen. or there's going to be undue suffering. Amen. <coughs> this is good teaching, by the way. Hallelujah. If you've never heard good teaching or preaching, this is good teaching. Thank you, Just Father. Thank you, Father. If you pray and I pray and seek Him, God will give us the perfect time. Now, this, this kept coming to me about retirement. I didn't want to say it. Because I don't want any seeds planted in Isha's mind. Amen. So this, this is not for thee. This is, this is not thee, Ish. We're dividing this to whoever but not Ish. My, my brother, Steve, not Rick, the one that you guys know Rick. My brother, we talked last week and, and he... I had that on my mind about the that there's a perfect time for everything. And he just starts telling me a story that I knew some of it, but it's been long, many years since I heard it. He was telling me that um, when he got 30 years at where he had worked the factory job, he'd been there 30 years and um, he has two, two children of his own and he's um, their blended family and his wife had two children and... and um, he said, it just came on him one day, he's at his job. And um, he just, he knew. He said, it's time. And I guess him and Bobby had talked about it. I'm not sure how all that worked out. But all I know is he said, he went in like the next day and he said, uh, uh, I'm fixing to retire. And they said, uh, what do you mean? And he said, well, I've been here long enough. And they said, well, do you have something lined up? He said, no. Well, have you looked for another job? No. Well, what are you going to do? I don't know. But he, he felt it on the inside of him. He felt peace that he was supposed to do it. He was supposed to do it then. Yeah. Well, he, he did it. They, they said, well, you got so many weeks vacation or whatever. He said, don't want that. I, I guess they paid him for it or something. But uh, they said, come in and work one day and then you're gone. Well, the people that were around him were like, you're the biggest fool I've ever seen in my life. You ain't even got another job, and you don't quit a good job, make you good money, and you you just fell off the turnip truck. He said they're just acting like he is. So it's so stupid. He goes out the day after he retires and puts in an application somewhere. Gets hired. They they want him to start work immediately. He didn't even get the four or five weeks vacation that were coming to him from the other job. He didn't get that in between time because he's working on his new job. Drawing retirement from his old job. <laughs> they didn't think he was so stupid anymore. Because uh, he's making the same thing or more. And, he, and you know what I'm saying? I mean, but God knows how to line things up that we don't know. I tell you what we do. We think, see, God says it might not make sense in the natural. But God has arranged everything in the natural, things that you can't see, to coincide with his perfect timing. You can't make that decision based on how much money you have in the bank. You can't quit a job based on, I've got so much money in the bank. You, you can't quit a job or retire from a job because I've got so much money in the bank. You may not. And God said it's time. Or God may say, work, you know, well, I'm going to retire at a certain age or I'm going to quit at a certain time. And God said, get that age thing out your head. Yes. He may have you go 10 years past that age thing. Yes. I mean, you, you can't do that. It's not about that. It's, it's not based on the economy. Well, if the economy is better, that's what you know. That's when I'll do it. Well, you can't go by the economy. That's an outside indicator. We're led by the Spirit. Stop looking at outside indicators to determine how God is going to lead you to do something. God always leads us from the inside out, not from the outside in. God's leading us is not based on circumstances. It's based on His will and His timing. We should be praying, God, you show me when the perfect time is in this situation. When's the perfect time to buy a car? When's the perfect time to buy a house? When is the perfect time to sell a house? When is the perfect time to sell a car? When is the perfect time to leave a job or, or change locations where if you're going to move out of state or something? We don't tell him. He tells us. We ask him Amen. and get him to show us because he knows the divine plan. Amen. 
I'm going to go ahead and meddle. Keep meddling. Can I do that? Yes. I'm a pastor. I have license to meddle. <laughs> we buy things a lot of times out of time. Amen. You know, a lot of times I'll preach a sermon and somebody will come to me after the sermon and say, you were looking right at me. Amen. The whole time you were looking right at me. And I never saw that one time in the sermon. Because I've actually trained myself to look over people's heads now. Because I used to see people were yawning and stuff. And, and it'd throw me off. And I'd lose my place. And I'd just get messed up. So most of the time I'm looking right over people's heads. And Sharon, a lot of times she said, well, so-and-so there? I said, I don't know. She said, you were standing up there. I said, yeah, but I didn't see nobody. <laughs> I got that from Brother Copeland. I heard him say that. A lot of times we buy things out of time. Hang on. We charge it. We accumulate debt on things that God said to wait for. See, now I've a, read a lot of Christian books. And some of those books say, God never says no, and he never says wait. Some of the books that I've read, and they're from good Christian people, and I'm thinking, well, i got a different God than you got. Because sometimes my God has said wait. He has told me wait so much, I thought my middle name was wait. <laughs> And wait doesn't mean no, it just means wait. I, I have something for you, and it's even better than what you're planning. Or I'll give it to you at a better deal or, or whatever, but I want you to wait. See, but we got a credit card. We got plan B. We don't have to wait. God says, wait to take that vacation. <laughs> I ain't got to wait. I got a card. And then I got this one. Then this one's got that one. Amen. Yeah, yeah. I got three. I got to cover. Amen. But yeah, then you get under the pressure. The pressure comes Amen. from paying for something that God didn't ordain at that time, out of time. Amen. And because it causes pressure when it's gotten out of time. Amen. Not that He doesn't want us to have the highest and best. We get things out of time. Amen. Well, God, I, I, I need new clothes. Mine are wore out. God says, wait. Anybody else up there? <laughs> I mean, I'm going to look slouchy at my job. I have, I have, you know, I need a new wardrobe. God says, wait and watch my glory be revealed. Yes. That's right. And he wants to see if you're going to trust him and you're going to wait or you're going to take matters into your own hands. Amen. He, he could be planning to have somebody else buy your clothes or he, he was going to supernaturally give you money that you weren't going to have any other way, supernaturally put money in your hands for those funds. Amen. And you'll know that that's what it's for. Amen. But instead of waiting, we get out of time. Now we're under pressure to pay bills for things God said wait for. Hang on. I know this is not a shouting down kind of sermon. It's not a kind of sermon that you really want to do when the time's changed and a lot of people are still home asleep. <laughs> but you came, so I have to give you what God gave me. Amen. Now we're under pressure to pay bills for things God said wait for. I'll provide them for you, but I want you to trust me. You show that you trust me by seeking me and waiting until I tell you it's time or I give you a piece about it. You might be wanting a car and you don't have any peace about buying one. But your old car is in bad shape. Now I know we've had several of those, but you did wait. And several people in this congregation did wait on their vehicle. And God blessed them with a good vehicle. Yes. But your old car's in bad shape, and you're thinking you don't want to be doing any more repairs. Well, have you prayed about it? Well, if you're praying about it and you have no peace, wait. Yes. He's not trying to take something away from you. He's trying to give you something better than you would have had before. With less pressure or no pressure, God does not, wait does not mean no. He's saying, I got a perfect time. Yes. And if you'll wait on my perfect time, I'll give you my highest and best. That's right. But so many times, we do things out of time, out of God's perfect time. Right. Include Him, ask Him. He has a perfect time. Okay? Pressing needs. I'm coming to a close. I heard that. <laughs> Some of y'all said, hallelujah, thank God. <laughs> then I can take a breath when I get out of this building. 
Yeah. I can't even breathe in here right now. I said, stuff. What the hell? Is there a dish or something? Press the knees don't mean it's time. We'll say, Lord, my shoes are wore out. It's got to be time for a new pair of shoes right now. He said, it is. But I'm going to give them to you. I'm going to give you a better pair than you ever had before. But are you willing to wait on them? I don't know. They look pretty bad, so it's about how you look. You're more, you're more concerned, we are, about how we look than whether we're doing what God wants us to do or not. Amen. Amen. Mm. See, God will make a way. You've got pressing needs. But that doesn't mean it's time. God will make a way when there seems to be no way. I, I know I read about this this couple that their car was just, just you know messing up, messing up, messing up, and uh, they're believing for another car, and they're believing for another car, and and finally the car gave out, and uh, God didn't tell them to get another car. He said, uh, "Just do what you got to do." And what they had to do was catch public transportation for a while. They had to do this, and had to do that, and, and you know it was very inconvenient for a time. But it wasn't inconvenient, you know, about a year later when somebody just uh, crossed the country and called them up and said. The, the Lord woke me up and told me to give you a vehicle. All right. Well, all right. Amen. All right. It's amazing how we want to be around God when payday's there. That's right. <laughs> we like payday. Pray about the timing, and your steps will be ordered to God's timing to put us in the right place at the right time. I heard uh, Joel Osteen make a comment one time. He said he was in the mall with Victoria. And he said he found this very, very nice tie. And he said he really wanted this tie. Victoria, you know, talked to him about the tie. Yeah, you know, that tie looks good on you. And he said uh, he really wanted it. And he's fixing to get it. And then he didn't have peace about it. Well, Joel Osteen had the money to pay for the tie. Trust me. And he said, I'm not going to get it. And she said, why not? He said, I, I just don't have peace about it. They're shopping. A couple hours later, they're in another store and they're walking through. And Victoria looks at Joel and she said, look, there's your same tie that we just saw that you wanted. Oh, man, it's half price. <laughs> then he had the peace. God was trying to save him money. See, even in little bitty things, little bitty things of obedience, little bitty things of timing and waiting, it wasn't to hurt him. It was to bless him. It was to multiply the money he already had. But he had to be willing to trust God that God had something better or just as good at a better price. He had to wait an hour or two, maybe, to be in God's perfect timing and get the same thing he wanted anyway. Sometimes we may have to wait a day or two. A week or two. A month or two. A year or two. <laughs> You know it's true. I tried to slide that one in there. <laughs> I'll give you another one. We're, we're coming to a close. How many of y'all have ever been mad about something? You don't have your hand up, you're lying anyway. <laughs> if they don't have their hand up, just point at your neighbor and say, You lie, you cry. <laughs> What do you want to do and I want to do when we're mad? Speak. You're mad at somebody. They've made you mad. The place has made you mad. Everybody made you mad. You want to speak. You want to open your mouth wide. And you're not asking God to fill it. You, you're going to fill it. You want to speak. But what you want to speak is instead of waiting on God's timing, you're going to speak out of your flesh and say things you're going to have to repent for. Right. Have to go back and ask forgiveness for it. So don't speak in the wrong time. That'll be your flesh. Don't speak a word out of season or out of time. Isaiah 43, 18 and 19. Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. 
Now is the time. Wait a minute. Now, if I told you now, Jesse, I'm going to buy you a T-bone steak. Now, as soon as service is over, now I'm going to do it. You, you'd expect a T-bone steak. I'm not telling you that, by the way. There is. I'm, I'm not even... I'm not even. <laughs> but but you, would, you, would, you would know what it was now. You would understand now is a, a set time, an appointed time. It's now. Now it shall come forth. Shall you not know it? I'll even make way of desert and floods in the wilderness. That's the Geneva Bible. When God's will, you're going to, here's room to shout, and God's timing intersect, we get a suddenly. Amen. When you and I have waited on God's timing, God's been holding us back. He said, wait, 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 wait for it, wait, wait. He said, now, now it's just wait for it. Now. I'll do anything. Now, I'm releasing your blessings. Now, I'm sending the answers to those prayers. Now, I'm manifesting my glory like you ain't never seen it before. You've been praying for a long time and you've been waiting and waiting and waiting. But you waited on me. You didn't do plan B. And now, you'll see my glory like never before. Now, you'll get a breakthrough like never before. And now, you'll get those answers to prayer that you've been believing for manifested now. Thank you, Ask y'all to stand.